welcome to the big internet markup. ChatGPT received on average 30 million unique visitors per day in January 2023, more than double the daily number in December 2022. In March 2024, ChatGPT received 1.8 billion visitors, on average 60 million visitors per day. Now we've heard about how ChatGPT Ch was trained, machine learning, and we've heard about mass and its usefulness in society. In just a few minutes, I'll tell you how mathematics was used we to make our uh, daily lives very easy. Ability. Now, when you collect information about people, you store it in certain containers. Mm. And if you consider uh, co collect only one information about someone, you can you store it in a container with only one label. If you collect information about, let's say, the height and the ages of someone, you can you collect in a know, container with two you. labels. Now, if you have a container with one label and a container with two labels, can you add them? Or a container with two labels and three labels, can you add them? Seems not. So we think of um, vectors as containers, which we can add if they have similar entries, or if you have a container which stores the age of people and you want to compute their age twice of their age, what you do is just what? Scale their ages by two. So we think of a vector as an object that you can add or scale. So let's consider having a box with six rows and five columns and it's filled with zeros. Now if you want to rotate that box 90 degrees at clockwise, then we get a new box now with five rows and six columns. Or you could consider this logo of YouTube if we rotate it 90 degrees anti-clockwise we get this other image. This rotation that we did can be represented by some function where each starting point goes to um, a final point under the function. And in math we call that math and linear math. Now if you consider an image like this, we can describe a single point in the image by certain numbers in some array which we call matrices. So if we consider an array where, so our picture now is in grayscale. So we consider black as zero and we consider white as 255. Then each point in our picture can be represented by a matrix. So when you think of um, pictures, we can write them as matrices and we can do a lot of analysis for this. So we can either filter it uh, so that the picture looks a bit different or we can rotate it or enlarge it, whatever we want to do with it. So you've seen that vectors are objects that you can add or scale and you've seen that we can have what matrices that helps you to represent it, either an image or transform an image. Now let's consider this object. If we slope it this way, and you put a, a ball on it, it will fall a bit slow, slower than if we, we tilt it this way, if we put a ball on it, then it will fall very fast. So we say that this angle is was steeper than that angle. And that is mathematics, we're talking about derivatives. So in mass, we do something which we call multivariate calculus, and it's meant to help us to find what ways of what minimizing the error that we get when we are trying to find a model that's wrong. Well, um, predicts something. So we've seen that's what in mass we can learn about vectors, we can learn about what multivariate calculus which helps us to minimize error. Then finally, we've heard about 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D and the rest. What does a D mean? So if you have just what one entry describing point, then we can say that that point is in what one dimension. So you can think of a number line. But if you have two points describing a point, then we can say that it is in two dimensions. So the, the dimension tells you how many entries are um, explaining um, your point. But we can have 3D. But what about 4D? How can we um, draw an image in 4D? Or even 5D or higher? If we have an object in 4D, 5D or 100D, can we be able to visualize it? How would you do so? So currently we can't visualize um, an object um, in, in 100D or 5D, but when you visualize um, um, a, a data, it helps you to better understand it. So in mass, there's this um, concept called principal component analysis. What does it do? It combines our knowledge in vectors, our knowledge in matrices, our knowledge in, in calculus, and helps you that given the data, it helps you to extract the key 
features that's best described so if you have a data in a hundred dimension it helps you to if you want to find the best four um, features that's best described it it helps you to reduce your dimension from let's say 100 to 3 so that you can visualize the data and see it very well so a real life example would be that when you go to the bank and you want to take a loan right they collect data about your income your education your age your residence your employment savings your debt and your credit cards now this is a lot of data but the bank wants to see what are the four key features they need to, to analyze your ability to repay a loan so they, com they, they perform a principal component analysis and the knowledge in mass comes in handy here. There's something we call eigenvalues there. So you look at the key features which has the highest eigenvalues and that tells you that they have more weights and you should consider those features. Yes, and when this was done with this example, we realized that if you want to give someone a loan, the age, the residence, the employment and the savings matter. So you see the maths that we do have real life applications. And anytime you hear about artificial intelligence or machine learning, you now know the maths behind it. Thank you.